All right, so my name is Amber Tannehill, and I'm one of the sub-team leads from the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. Just a brief background about our team. So we are one of the engineering payload teams. We're a team of 10 students from a bunch of different grades and majors, including high school students, because we do outreach with local high schools in our area. Um, and I'm from UNL, but we also collaborate with UNO and MCC. We heard Dr. Nero from UNO talk earlier today, and we launched from Roswell, New Mexico for the annual eclipse. And the whole experience of being involved in NEBP from the initial planning phases last summer to the test launches all the way up through the annual eclipse has been the first high altitude ballooning experience for a lot of people on the team, including myself. So it's been quite a journey to get to learn from literally not knowing anything about high altitude ballooning um, to getting to learn all of the basics through the classes that we've been taking um, up until where we are now. But because we had to learn all of this from square one, there are a lot of obstacles and unexpected outcomes that came up that we had to address. So the first of which was um, the issues with the vent that we've had. So this is the sub team that I'm in charge of. And our advisors initially obtained a vent um, that we used for our first test of the balloon. And the cut down didn't work. Um, the venting itself did work, but we had to troubleshoot how to wrap the string properly, um, how to like make the cut down work better through a bunch of different tests. And the vent also broke. So we had to reprint it, make some slight changes to it, reassemble it, um, and then do more tests with the vent itself, a tethered balloon launch, and then a full untethered balloon launch. And all of this, we got it to a point where the vent was working fine, and we also had to make sure it was documented so people knew how to properly wrap the string, how to attach the balloon so it didn't fly off, so that any person on the team could repeat it, since we didn't necessarily know if people would be at every single launch. And this leads us to our next issue, which was on the actual eclipse day. So even though we performed all the pre-launch steps according to plan, of course things didn't go as expected, which seems to be the common theme for a lot of us here. Um, it took us longer than expected to get everything set up, and we didn't have a very big window because there was weather and high winds approaching, so we were worried if we waited too long, we wouldn't be able to launch it all that day. Um, so we were already kind of stressed with getting everything done in the short time frame we had, and while filling up the balloon with helium, at the last possible second before we launched, the balloon flew off, which I know Dr. Nara briefly mentioned earlier. And we were all panicking because we brought one backup balloon, so we had one more shot to get it launched, and we were very tight on time. And luckily, we're, we were all able to stay calm, pull it together. We wrapped the string slightly differently so that it didn't fly off this time. And it was held on tighter. And I'm really proud of how the team performed because we were all panicking. Um, but luckily, we were able to launch it literally seconds before um, the end of our deadline. And finally, there was another odd thing that occurred when we went to recover the balloon. So I was also part of the recovery team. And the launch went fine. Um, the cutdown didn't work, but the venting did work. So we're still we still have to troubleshoot the vent. I guess that'll just never end. Um, and we also lost signal partially in terms of both the uh, live stream and the GPS, which is either due to the cold and the batteries or the altitude. We're not sure. Um, but when we eventually did regain signal for the GPS, we were able to find the payload. And it was actually kind of easy because the balloon was still attached. And we'd never seen this before. And there were two professors with us who have a lot of high altitude ballooning experience. And they'd never seen it before either in all of their launches. So we thought this was very strange. And it was also kind of cool getting to like take turns holding the balloon after it had landed and kind of like mess around with it. Um, because it's just it's just interesting. And um, we think the reason this happened was because we kept venting a lot, trying to get the cut down to work. And instead of cutting down, it just kept venting. Um, and so that allowed us to have this gradual descent rate where it didn't pop. And overall, the launch was a success. The payloads all worked. We got the data we needed. Um, so now we're just working on the process of analyzing it. The live stream was successful. As you saw in an earlier slide, we did get screenshots from it. And most importantly, we learned the, how to adapt and overcome to challenges that came in our way. And this is an important skill for not just future launches, but for everything in life. So I'm glad you were able to learn this. Um, thank you for listening. Thank you, Amber. Up next, we have uh, St. Catherine University.